Alrighty, good morning YouTube. Uh Hajim Zero here back with another quick movie review. Um this one's going to be uh I would say not really intense, but I can definitely see the criticism of what I'm going to say versus you know how people may feel about it. Um this is all eyes on me, the uh the biopic, you know, story you want to call it based off of Tupac Shakur. Um and uh, it stars Demetric Ship, uh, Denai Guerrera, uh, Lauren Cohen. Um, I'm trying to think of who else is in this. Uh, Hill Harper, um, Jamal Woodard that plays Biggie Smalls. Uh, probably leaving out some names. Can't remember the, the dude that played Suge Knight. But uh, the list goes on and on. So as I stated, if you saw my Tupac Resurrection um, uh review pretty much is going to be some repeated information but it's going to be some new facts that this movie had introduced and even some additional facts that both pieces never really talked about so it's pretty much um well to, to give a little bit of, of a clue what happened behind the scenes and a little bit of my opinion uh seeing this movie um showing it to like a generation that didn't grow up Listen to Tupac's uh, music is pretty much why they had made this in the first place. You know, this is something that my brother would watch, and he's like 17, even though he had his opinions on Tupac of who he thought he was. But, you, you know, I, me and, and my mom and I know who he really is. And, you know, that is, that's pretty much what it's, you know, uh, introducing it, you know, to. Um, but, uh, my mom and I actually saw this in theaters and it was funny because both of I, both of us had agreed the movie wasn't bad, but it still felt like something was missing. And there was another reviewer who had said the same thing. It's because Tupac Resurrection had a lot of information, deeper inf information. But of course, they didn't go into that deep into it. And then on top of that, what I didn't know about this movie is that um, the good thing of why it really wasn't that bad, like some of the other biopic films mainly with the tv ones like the the Aaliyah one is because no one on that set really knew who Aaliyah was or you know I heard you know it wasn't that many people who who knew or was involved in the film Wendy Williams was behind it and she it seemed like they had rushed that and that's why it was really really as bad as people said it was but with this um the producer of the film uh and I think the, the director, too, mainly the, the producer, he knew Tupac. He, he knew him for a year right before he died. And um, and some of the outlaws were in the uh, were around the film, too. One particular outlaw, I believe, uh, I might tag him in the video. Um, and, of course, put it in the comment uh, box if you guys ask. You know, we can go back and forth in that. He's actually in the film himself. But... Uh, yeah, it was at least a, a somewhat consultant yeah, there. In my opinion, um, you know, uh, and a little bit of a fact, too, uh, Afani uh, Shakur, before she passed, um, allegedly it was stated that she wanted John Singleton to, to do the, the movie because she knew that, you know, he would do it right. And on top of that, he knew Pac. Yeah, he, he you know, he directed him in poetic justice and he had other projects he wanted to put him in of course baby boy and higher learning you know which was bittersweet because you know i bet you the two of them had talked you know about him being in that role before you know uh him going to jail had had, had hindered that but um in my opinion um on top of that i believe ernest dickerson and um gary f gray should have done, you know, the film because they knew Pac too. You know, of course, Ernest Dickerson had directed him in his first movie, which was his first movie, which was Juice. And even he stated, you know, him and Omar Epps, you know, this this guy was always writing on set and a lot of the, the stuff he was writing was the music that we heard later on. And, um, you know, uh, Gary F. Gray, I believe he directed some of his uh, music videos. I would say the Hugh Brothers, but you know, they had like a, um, timid, you know, relationship, you know, uh, with that assault and then them going, you know, him, 
him having creative them having creative disagreements and that was kind of messed up too because i think if that wouldn't have happened something is telling me the hugh brothers possibly would have done this film as well because they also had directed you know a lot of his early music videos as well but um pretty much you know this movie was made like right when afani after afani had had died John Singleton was still alive and at that point, and it just kind of sucks that, you know, since he, he was the main brain source and he had died, you know, I think there's a reason why this movie had turned out that the way it was. Now, um, I will say the good thing about this movie, uh, the way it was cast was perfect. Um, Denai Guerrera, um, pardon me if I mispronounce her name, looked like a, a funny and even had that that embodiment embracement and the good thing is that she had talked to Afani as well you know before you know she had passed away Demetric Ship the guy that plays Tupac he looks like him as well and um even when we get to straight out of Compton the, the guy that played um Tupac in that he looked like him as well too and it was kind of you know I'm kind of curious if he never would have taken you know the um the role if they would have called that guy up um also, I for, uh, and I always do this with the casting. Uh, I can't remember the, the chick's name, but she did a good job playing Jada Pinkett. Even though I'm about to, I'm going to talk about that situation as well. Um, I think her name is Cat. Yes, yeah, Cat Graham, and uh, the actress that played uh, Kenyatta uh, Jones, um, Quincy Jones' daughter, and did a good job as, in, as well too. Um, but going back with the whole behind the scenes. You know, it's kind of funny how people had their criticisms, but they really didn't look what the production had looked like and what was, you know, happening. And even with the, the Notorious, um, I'm also going to review with some some good information I found on that as well. You know, um, when a lot of people hated on that movie, but, you know, it's kind of funny when I mention, you know, the main prevalent thing on that, you really can't hate on it as much. But um, like I said, the way that this, the narrative of the movie, it made it really a movie. It wasn't thrown together where, you know, it was like that bad. And another funny thing um, is that uh, Demetric Ship had even, he was also even casted in the, uh, in the Bobby Brown Lifetime movie as Tupac. Apparently I found this one out. Allegedly, he was messing with Whitney Houston as well, because Bobby Brown, I think he talked about it in like his book or or something like that. But um, there was a lot of things about Tupac that most people didn't know. He was cool with, with Left Eye, and um, when Left Eye was dating that that football player, he yeah. And this was a right around. I can't remember if it was before or after she had burned down the house when she found out that Andre was cheating, and. Um, Allegedly, uh, the two of them w were talking back and forth. Now, I don't know if they were messing around, but Andre found out he was pissy. And I think that's why the two of them had, had went at it. And, you know, I should have really talked about that on um, Tupac Resurrection because, I, you know, he knew a lot of people. He, Like I said, Selena found out he was cool with Kurt Cobain, Mickey Rourke. Um, the list goes on and on. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, John B. I know he, he recorded like a, a a track or a song with him like a a month or so before you know he he had passed away and um the thing is is that this movie it it left it really didn't fully recreate certain scenes correctly like when he had got uh when he got assassinated after the Tyson fight um you can look up the interview about the the cop that was there on, on the scene now what they did get right was that dude was on the bike he and had followed him because dude was speeding but um in this in the movie Suge had opened the the door but the cop that had had responded he vivid he vividly had described you know him coming up to the side of the passenger door and then you know he opened the door and pocket like slouched and and fell out and he was still conscious and then his last conscious moments and words he had he had told the, the, the dude fuck you you know, because he was asking him questions like, you know, who had did this to you and X, Y, and Z. And then later, you know, he went to surgery and then that's when he had passed. 
And it was funny because um, I remember as a kid uh, going in, in one of the music stores um, and um, pretty much vividly re remembering, you know, seeing the banners, you know, Tupac, rest in peace and all that. And that was like in 96. Yeah, I was like six years old when he had he had died. And I was uh, in Jersey at the time. And I remember as a kid, sometimes, you know, my mom would take me into New York or or, or at least Jersey around in the mall in, in that area. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, would see that everywhere. It's like very, very glimpsed memories of it. Uh, and then eventually, um, of course, Big had passed. I don't remember, you know, seeing that much about it, you know, on the news, but it was still a big deal, especially in Brooklyn. And, you know, it's very funny how you remember things from your childhood, but it's like piece by piece. But um, I liked how they got most of the facts down, how he went with Digital Underground, and then he was uh, at Interscope, then he went with Death Row. And, you know, uh, what a lot of people don't know is that he was only with death row for like nine months, you know, and then that's when he had got, he had got shot and passed away. But, um, another, uh, fact I had discovered about, um, this movie is that he was actually married. Um, he wasn't married to, to, to Kenyatta. Now, uh, you know, of course, Wikipedia had told me this, but you, you really take what Wikipedia say with, with a grain of salt, but other sources, like if you type, um, the alleged girl's name, on um even in Google there are other articles that 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 are not sourced to Wikipedia that say yeah he they were actually married um it was it was it was very funny how neither this movie or resurrection had even talked about it because apparently they they had got divorced and he started seeing Kenyatta and they were engaged up to the time that you know he, he had got killed and it was funny because um, my mom was saying it, it. She was the one that was trying to keep him, you know, at the uh, at the room in the hotel. And something was telling me that, of course, if he would have stayed, you know, he would have been alive today. But um, I can't remember if I say this, stated this on Tupac Resurrection, but I don't think I did. But they actually got the guys or it's not really a big secret, you know, who killed Tupac. Um if you look at one of the interviews on Vlad TV with MC8, uh, he he stated that yeah the whole yeah everyone on the streets knew who had did it. I mean that fight that he got into it had a, a lot you know to, to do with it. And then of course Suge Knight yeah was indirectly stating that yeah the dudes that had killed him they were actually coming for me. But um, allegedly the guys that um, that were in the car that had killed him, it was four dudes and one of them still alive. And the first shooter, um, who was like in the back seat on the uh, on the right side, he was originally gonna do it, but I think he 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 really didn't want to, and of course he really couldn't aim correctly, so they passed the gun, uh, or or the dude took it, the one that was next to him, who was like a lot closer to, to the vehicle. And um, I think the the one guy who didn't want to do it, he's the one that's left alive. And he had stated that, to be honest, it really wasn't a whole set up thing that we were going to do. Uh, I think it was some girls or something that had gave away, you know, um, you know, Pox, you know, position. And yeah, and they had stated, you know, if uh, if they never would have said anything that night, we, you know, we never would have shot them. It was just, a, you know, a coincidence that. It was in that time and place, you know, um, but, you know, Pac, he was affiliated, you know, with the Bloods, like how Snoop was, you know, with the Crips. And I don't think, he, well, he was affiliated, but I don't think he was in there, you know, like in and if you know what I'm saying. And, um, you know, uh he, I think he had that mentality, be, you know, of, of being hard and, and wanted to, to fight because, you know, previously he got shot five times in New York and he was already a little bit paranoid. And he knew it was kind of like that bishop mentality that, you know, of, of what he said, you know, uh, you need to let them motherfuckers know that you, you getting ready to take them out. You know, it's a dog eat dog world. And he feel like he had to, you know, to be hard and, and, you know, prove himself. And that's what Suge Knight had even said on one of the 
the the documentaries of Tyson and Tupac going to prison. You know, he going to do what he have to do. But I'm like, it is a little bit fucked up yet with Suge Knight because he's, you know, deeply, you know, deeper within the, the you know, the, 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 the blood gang than Pac was. And I'm like, you would at least told him, you know, not don't do that shit because you can get killed. You know, at least th- th- that's what I'm thinking. You know, you're running this this death row, you know, empire. You at least want to, you know, protect your artists a little bit better, you know. And but if you see the movie, he did, you know, at one point did try to like calm him down. And he's like, yo, yo, relax. You know, I can put somebody else on this shit, you know, to, to get homie's chain back since he ran up on dude. And it was kind of weird, though, if, if you want to ask me, because. In the movie, and it also, I think it happened for real, too, uh, when Pac was was in a meeting with Shug talking about the All Eyes On Me album, that's when the guys that came in and had told him, yeah, you know, we had got jumped at, you know, at the mall and, and X, Y, and Z. And it just seemed kind of weird how then you go to Vegas in a casino and the same dude is, is in there. So that part is a little bit, you know, fishy, if you ask me. So it's, it, you know, because it's rumors about Tupac's death all the way around, you know, because now since, you know, people know, and like I said, with the MC8, you know, interview, yeah, he, he stated that they, yeah, the streets and like Watts and Compton, they knew who had killed him. It's not a big fucking secret. It's just that people, you know, the media have, have riled that up so they can make movies and documentaries off the shit. But, um... It was other rumors speculating that that Suge, of course, you know, was behind it, you know, um, and for all we know, that can be a good coincidence because you see this movie, you know, it is speculated that he wanted to, to get out of death row. You know, he he wasn't he saw what, you know, what Dre has saw with with the, the circus bullshit and, you know, it, it was that pivotal point in the movie where he thought that Suge or it looked like Suge was going to kill him. But instead, he wanted him to operate, you know, with Death Row uh, East and, you know, it pretty much smash out Bad Boy at, at that time. Um, And also, uh, Snoop had eventually left and it was a smart thing because now Suge Knight is in jail. I don't know where Death Row Records is at now, but um, it just blows. And my mom was saying that in the movie, never tell the, the, the devil you know, your plans, you know, especially if you own them, because he will shatter that. And then not to mention, you know, you're you're looking over your shoulder the entire time because uh, Pac had a lot of stuff he was planning. You know, Bill Duke ha- ha- has has said and stated that, you know, they were planning to work on something, but he unfortunately got killed. And like I said, on Tupac Resurrection, he auditioned, you know, for, for Star Wars. He was potentially going to be in Baby Boy and, um... I think it was in another movie he eventually or I eventually said he, he could have been in, you know, the, the Too Fast, Too Furious because, you know, with Tyrese, John working with him, you know, all that. I, yeah, I, I foresaw that one happening. And of course, Bill, him working with Bill Duke and him wanting to be more of an actor, you could have saw that, you know, that's what would have happened. And it's just, you know, sad talent, you know, but the good thing is that he he wrote a lot he had you know a lot of stuff in archives and and you know that book with the poetry which i gladly say i i i own you know um you know the one the poems that he wrote for jada some of the you know early samples that were potentially songs and um pretty much the last thing i'm gonna touch on in this movie uh was how they portrayed him and jada pinkett the good thing is that, of course, in Tupac Resurrection, that was fully real. But the two scenes, and um, even Jada Pinkett had talked about it, that really wasn't true, was the um, was the poem that he wrote for her that they put in the movie. Now, she did eventually did read the poem, but that was after he had died and knew that that poem was written was for her. You know, that scene that was on, 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 the, on the leg by the pew, that, that didn't happen. Now, I see that for some cinematic effect. And it isn't the first time they did it. If you see the, the Tina Turner movie with Angela Bassett, it was the same thing. Certain things didn't happen in a certain way. And then um, the scene where Jada had came to him about, you know, the whole hit him up song. 
And um, and she stated that didn't happen either. You, you know, in my opinion at the time, she she may have opinionated that or that's what she thought that way. But yeah, she she said that that never happened. You know, the only women I could really think of that could have criticized him for that song was his mom, his sister, and of course Kenyatta, who who he was dating. You know, because you know, uh, I understand that you were mad, and you know the song is dope. You know, it's one of the like one of the best diss tracks and tracks in general. You know even on the greatest hits and that was there like with ice cube and no vaseline you know but um you know i could see yeah his mom you know coming at him because you know later afani and and viola uh wallace they were they hugged each other at the source awards you know and you you know the two moms grieving over the loss of their sons killed in, in a similar way so you know that you know they all that bullshit that was between them, it wasn't it wasn't going on with, with the moms. But uh you know, it, it's just kind of funny how, you know, I'm assuming that that's how Jada could have felt, but you know, at the same time, she probably didn't care that much because, you know, she could have talked to him in a certain way, you know, saying, you know, you gotta look at it from this point, you, you know, a point of view. Even though um they had, you know, him and Big had got into it. You know, I, I will take Big's side. You know, he did warn, you know, Tupac of, of the shit that he was getting in, messing with the guy that had indirectly set him up. Because, um, and I figured this out before I even looked it up. When uh, the guy that um, he was with, they called him Nigel in the movie. His real, he had, that, that name is actually fake. You can look it up on Wikipedia and find out the real dude. But um, even one of my co-workers was telling me that, yeah, within that crew, it was um, he never liked Tupac. And even in the in the film, the way he had eyeballed him, it looked like he was working on some some sinister shit. And then even when the alleged rape had happened, I really believe that that dude had set him up on that shit, because when they had tried them on the rape case, um, I don't know if it was the dude's lawyer that has, has suggested and, and trying them separately, or if guy has, has said, okay, yeah, let, let's do this. Yeah. You, you know, like, so if it was a setup and then, like I said, coincidentally, you know, dude had showed up at the studio, you know, with, with Biggie. And then, you know, he, he gets, he gets shot and, and robbed for his chain. So, you know, in the movie he had, had depicted, you know, that they were talking shit in that scene they were at the club and you know um the Nigel guy had stated that he never told them you know to, to do anything to Pac but that you could take that with a grain of salt either way you know it still happened I you know I really believe he could have planned you know something eventually but dude he looked like he disobeyed guy's order and had did it anyway but again we could talk about that in the comment you know section box because I remember um, when I was working, you know, at that warehouse and me and the dude was talking about it for a while. We were going back and forth, you know, with the alleged theories. And even in this and Notorious B.I.G., um, he he did warn him, you know, and it's it's kind of funny how, you know, uh, Pac had really thought that, you know, he had set him up and he never thought he did warn me about the yeah, them dudes in the first place. And then especially when he went to jail and heard that song, Who Shot You, it just seemed like a, a fucked up coincidence. And it was stated that, uh, you know, um, he wrote that that song months before all that shit happened. And he even pulled it from the radio because I think Big knew what the picture would have looked like if Pac had would have heard it. And, and like I said, we're... This is how I see. I really don't think Biggie had had set him up, you know, especially if he warned, you know, the guy, yo, you fucking with, with the wrong people. And and, <laughs> you know, he really should have, you know, in my opinion, he should have found out who actually did it, you know, to help out Pac. But, you know, Diddy had told him not to. He told him not to sink deeper into it. And. It's just a mixed match of my opinions, but I, I completely understand, you know, both, you know, perspectives. 
But um, besides that, that's all I have to say about this film. Um, you know, hopefully this brother Dimitri uh, Ship does more movies. Apparently, he's doing a heist one um, with Ti and um, with Ethan Hawke. I can't remember the name. I saw the trailer a few days ago. Uh, Kat Graham is in it. It is like right after Hurricane Katrina, and then they're doing this heist to like get money or something like that. But um, besides that, uh, that's all I have to say. Um, talk to you guys later. Peace.